Hey guys, Lily here. <laughs> so, it's another running diary. And um, this week I'm going to be talking about an update on where I am in terms of how far I've run today as well as gadgets for runners really briefly. So, first, I did 18 miles today. Whoop whoop, that's 29 kilometers, the furthest I've ever run in a single bound. And uh, that was in 2 hours and 34 minutes. So that was really good. And I was pleased with my pace. I was able to keep a really good pace with the rest of the group. I ran with the London Midnight Runners this time. Whoop whoop. And it was a sharp contrast to when I ran with them like four or so weeks ago, maybe a bit more, because I was so not ready for pace and a long run. But because I've been increasing my pace by myself on my long runs and the fact that I have two long runs a week and I've been able to do that in the last two weeks with my new running the art of running faster book it really made a huge difference and I was able to kind of recover quickly whenever we stop for water <laughs> and to make sure everybody else in the group joined us again it was just really really good so an amazing run 18 miles woo woo London Marathon here we come so the first gadgets you need are a good pair of running shoes, you know, things like Caramore or my beloved Nikes. What I would say is that you need more than one pair of running shoes. So you need, um, basically I have a different Caramore pair which is for short, faster runs. And then I have the Nikes, um, two pairs of Nikes for longer distance runs um, because they're lighter and I'm able to just lighter and good cushioning. So then after your running shoes and running clothes, the next thing you need are either your watch initially or a running app like Nike Plus, I believe. The ones that I've initially had though, I've never used Nike, is Runtastic. It's like on my phone. And it's always pretty much looked like this. I first got it on my um, Blackberries when I was living the Blackberry life. Um, and um, I actually turned down a BlackBerry upgrade once because it didn't have Runtastic <laughs> capability. Um, when I accidentally smashed the other phone, <laughs> there was a Samsung that had Runtastic on it, I had to get something else that would mean that I wouldn't damage my phone again. So I got a Garmin Forerunner 220, actually, there we go, Forerunner 220, and this is what the box looks like. Yes, I know the box is empty currently, but don't worry, I still have the good stuff. And this is what I now store my beautiful little Garmin watch in. And it's just a lightweight container that has mesh pockets with my Garmin watch in it. And I'm just going to turn on the Garmin watch. But it's, I've got it in the white and purple, but in this same range they have a black and red. And this is the charger, which is USB ended so you can kind of just plug it into a USB um, wall socket charger. It makes that noise when it turns on and whenever I get to a um, another kilometer lap it makes that noise and shows me my time for that kilometer. This is my heart rate monitor which I bought and came with the watch in that, in that original casing and actually was, the, was a lot cheaper than buying it anywhere else. Nice running watch. I like it. It does what it says it will do. Let me turn it off. Um, because I'm doing long runs, I tend to charge it twice a week um, so that it kind of doesn't bleed the battery. But if I was just doing half marathon training, I'd probably be able to get away with charging it just once a week. Um, the next thing is the advice I have received, which is for your first marathon or you can also use it for your first half marathon so four bits of advice one don't put too much time pressure on yourself keep it loose keep it easy um, so, so that you're not one too disappointed on race day and two you can still have an enjoyable race so for my first half marathon I said sub two hours and that was a good time to give myself because I actually still felt I had reserves when I was getting to the finish line and I could sprint it. So that was really good. Thing is don't overtrain or you will get injured. So um, if you have a training schedule that's working, make sure that training schedule includes a taper down. So in the last three weeks or so before you run, your long run should be 
getting shorter and shorter so that you have the reserves to then do this long distance. Otherwise, you will end up hurting your joints, hurting your muscles, just basically like feeling like you hit a wall quite early on or quite late on in the race, which is horrible. If you have to stop and walk, there's no shame in that. It's not failure, just do not look down. So when you look down, you basically accept the defeat and you stop looking at your goal. So keep looking forward, keep looking towards your goal. And then just know that I'm just stopping to walk to catch my breath and then I'm going back off again. So that's how you have meant to do it. Don't look down, keep looking at your goal. Enjoy the day. Just enjoy the actual race, enjoy the atmosphere of having so many runners around you, enjoy the atmosphere of people cheering for you all the way along the race. Look at the sights, enjoy seeing the sights from a different view, enjoy the fact that your body is doing what it's meant to be doing and you're flying. Enjoy every single minute of it. Do not like keep thinking about your time. Right. Thanks for watching guys. I will see you next time. Be good and God bless. Check it always ready to ball. I get down on this beat and I'm ready to roll. Grab me your mic and the pad and I'm ready to go.